In our headlines on this Wednesday afternoon, February 28th, here in South Korea. Seoul's health ministry files a complaint against five doctors for violating medical laws and obstructing justice amid government plans to boost medical school admissions quota. Also on the local front findings for December show the number of newborns following 3.8% on year, resulting in a fourth quarter fertility rate of 0.65, the lowest for any quarter. Meanwhile, NATO and the EU dismiss talk about a troop deployment to Ukraine as France's foreign ministry claims President Emmanuel Macron's earlier suggestion was in reference to soldiers being assigned to specific tasks such as mine clearance and not actual combat. Government authorities are putting into practice their words of warning against the collective action adopted by doctors here. Our Shin Haiyong reports. The Minister of Health and Welfare on Tuesday filed a complaint against five doctors protesting the government's expansion of the medical student admission quota. Affiliated with the Korean Medical Association, these doctors are charged with violating local medical laws and obstructing justice. This marks the first legal action taken by the government since the start of a mass walkout by trainee doctors about a week ago. The same day, the government announced that it has completed all legal reviews for judicial proceedings against trainee doctors who do not return to their posts by Thursday. This comes a day after the government issued the return to work deadline of February 29 for trainee doctors who have staged walkouts from hospitals to protest an increase in the medical school admissions quota. Certain regulations can be implemented to safeguard the public interest and maintain social order. We have concluded the legal review, confirming that the measures align with the current medical system. To respond quickly, especially in situations threatening the lives of patients, an immediate response team was established within the health ministry on Tuesday. The ministry announced a plan to speed up the enactment of the special act on handling of medical accidents. It aims to exempt doctors from liability or criminal punishment in the event of a medical accident, thereby reducing the legal liabilities that doctors would otherwise bear in such cases. Meanwhile, during a meeting on cooperation between central and local governments also on Tuesday, President Yoon sung yeol stated that medical reform should not be subject to negotiation. President Yoon emphasized the importance of reforming the stagnant medical school enrollment to ensure essential medical services and prepare for increasing demand due to rapid aging. He also urged cooperation between central and local governments to prevent gaps in patient care. The Korean Medical Association criticized the government, saying that suspending licenses and taking legal action against residents would further worsen the situation and eliminate any chance of their return to hospitals. Shin Ha-yong, Arirang News. Korea's grim demographic portrait continued into the month of December last year, with the number of newborns posting yet another plunge. Our Park Gono covers the latest findings. South Korea's population shrank again in December last year. According to data released by Statistics Korea on Wednesday, the number of newborns in December 2023 was around 16,000, down 3.8 percent on year. Birth figures for the fourth quarter last year also decreased by nearly 7 percent compared to the year before. The total fertility rate during that period was 0.65 per female, which was a fall of 0.05 from the previous year, making it the first time the total fertility rate fell below 0.7 for any quarter. Data also showed that the number of deaths in December dropped slightly compared to the year before, with a total of over 32,000. The figure for that month was the second highest in 2023 after January. With the number of deaths exceeding the number of births in December, the country's total population saw a natural decline of more than 16,000. The number of marriages last December was lower than 18,000, a drop of around 12 percent on year. Though that figure has been rising since September, the total number of registered marriages in quarter four decreased by over 5 percent on year. Divorce figures in Korea were down in both December and the fourth quarter. 
박건우 아리랑 뉴스. 삼성's Galaxy S24 smartphone series has surpassed 1 million domestic sales within a month of its launch. That would be 28 days to be precise. The 1 million milestone was reached back on Tuesday and beats the previous record set by the Galaxy S8 series back in the year 2017 by nine days. The latest S24 series also set a pre-order sales record in the domestic market by selling over 1.2 million units. In other news, Seoul's top diplomat Cho Taeol is in the U.S. meeting with officials there to reaffirm commitment to regional security and broader economic challenges. Our Che Min Jung reports. South Korea and the U.S. have reaffirmed that their economic cooperation has further expanded their alliance beyond military security. Seoul's Foreign Minister Cho Taeol met with the U.S. Director of the National Economic Council, Leo Brainard, on Tuesday at the White House to discuss the two countries' economic synergy. According to the Foreign Ministry, Cho assessed that economic cooperation between the two countries has strengthened based on the Seoul-Washington alliance and the 2012 Chorus Free Trade Agreement. He also evaluated that the U.S. government is creating results beneficial to both countries, thanks to close consultation with the Korean government in implementing economic policies, such as the Chips and Science Act and the Inflation Reduction Act. Echoing the sentiment, Brainard said she appreciated the alliance had grown beyond military security and that it's now working to respond to global economic uncertainties as well. She also stressed that South Korean companies operating in the U.S. and American companies operating in South Korea are contributing greatly to creating a stronger supply chain ecosystem as well as quality jobs. The two sides agreed to continue cooperating closely in the future. To do that, Minister Cho requested that the U.S. ensure that South Korean companies continue to receive treatment and incentives commensurate with their investment skill and contribution level in the U.S. Choi min Dong, Arirang News. The United Nations has denounced North Korea's supply of weapons to Russia. On day two of the latest disarmament forum in Geneva on Tuesday, France also urged North Korea to abide by UN Security Council resolutions against its hostile weapons ambitions. Ukraine, for its part, also condemned North Korea's support of Russian invasion, highlighting the loss of innocent lives and senseless destruction. Now, back on Monday, South Korea's second vice foreign minister, Kang in san called on the regime to seize its nuclear and missile programs and to return to nuclear disarmament talks. Come next Monday, South Korean forces and their U.S. counterparts will launch their joint Freedom Shield exercise. Now, the 11-day drill will integrate live exercises with constructive simulations. Our Peonji has more. Starting next Monday, military forces of South Korea and the U.S. will hold their combined exercise, the Freedom Shield. In a joint press briefing on Wednesday, the two countries explained that this is designed to strengthen their combined defense posture and response capabilities, based on scenarios that reflect diverse threats within the security environment, as well as lessons learned from recent wars and conflicts. The Republic of Korea and the United States militaries will conduct the Freedom Shield exercise to increase combined readiness and strengthen combined defensive posture for 11 days from March 4th through the 14th. They also said there will be a variety of combined field training exercises on land, at sea and in the air to increase interoperability. Member states of the United Nations Command will also be taking part and the Neutral Nations Supervisory Commission will observe the drills based on the armistice agreement. There will be a total of 48 combined field training exercises taking place all across the Korean Peninsula, including joint airstrike training, joint tactical live fire exercises, joint air-to-air -air shooting and air-to-ground bombing exercises. South Korea's defense minister Shin won sik had also told reporters on Tuesday that Seoul and Washington plan to conduct twice the amount of combined exercises within the first half of this year compared to the same period last year. 
He warned that the more the Allies strengthen combined exercises, the potential losses North Korea will suffer from starting a war would outweigh any gains, while adding that a full-scale attack from the North is unlikely. Pounds, Arirang News. On the international front, talk of possible troop deployment to Ukraine has been firmly dismissed by the EU and NATO. The U.S. also rejected prospects of American troop presence in Ukraine, while Russia was quick to issue an ominous warning. Our Lee Sing jae has the latest. The issue of sending troops was raised at a meeting in Paris on Monday, where European countries discussed ways to support Ukraine in its fight against Russia. There, Slovak Prime Minister Robert Fico raised the idea of troop support for Ukraine. Several NATO and European Union member states are considering sending troops to Ukraine at a bilateral level. French President Emmanuel Macron followed up, saying that there is no agreement on sending troops to Ukraine, but nothing should be ruled out, further stating that everything must be done so that Russia does not win. Looking to avoid further complicating the situation, EU and NATO member countries quickly expressed that they have no intention of having their countries send troops to support Ukraine. They include the leaders of Poland, the Czech Republic and Hungary, who during a meeting in Prague strongly shot down the idea. EU and NATO member nations like Germany, the United Kingdom, Italy and Spain also rejected deploying soldiers. The Pentagon on Tuesday also expressed an unwillingness to send military forces, despite being one of the biggest supporters of Ukraine during the two-year-long war. We have no plans to send U.S. service members to fight in Ukraine. Uh, the, the president has been pretty clear on that, and, and that continues to be uh, our position. Meanwhile, French Foreign Minister Stéphane Sejourne on a Tuesday clarified Macron's comments that Paris could send troops to Ukraine, saying the troops could be used in specific ways, such as mine clearance, while not directly fighting against Russia. Meanwhile, the Kremlin sent a stark warning to NATO, saying that any troop support for Ukraine would inevitably result in direct conflict with Russia. Lee seung Arirang News. Many say a picture is worth a thousand words. Accordingly, Korea and Italy are putting the wisdom of these words into practice at an exhibition here to mark 140 years of diplomatic ties. Our Ioni was there. This year marks 140 years of diplomatic relations between South Korea and Italy. To celebrate a special photo exhibition named All Roads Lead to History, Italy and Korea, is being held in Seoul at the National Museum of Korean Contemporary History. The most important aspect of this exhibition is to be able to explore the historical interactions between the two countries through photographs. In 1884, what was then the Joseon Dynasty signed a trade treaty with Italy. Later, when the Korean War broke out, Italy provided medical support for wounded soldiers and assistance to civilians for over three years. Photos and videos of the medical activities provided by Italian Red Cross during the Korean War in the 1950s are being unveiled for the first time in South Korea. The support during the war is seen as a solid foundation for strengthening the ties between the two countries. Although Italy wasn't a member of the United Nations, it responded to the international community's call and deployed a field hospital to South Korea. I am deeply grateful for Italy's support, especially a Western country that knew very little about our nation during those tragic times, for coming all the way here to provide care for our people. The exhibition also features the key interactions between the two countries in various areas, such as technology, sports and music. The official theme song of the 1988 Seoul Olympic Games, Hand in Hand, was composed by Italian composer Giorgio Moroder. Korea's culture minister, Yoo In-chun, says it is still considered the greatest theme song in Olympic history. The fact that the museum promotes uh, the people's participation, but I think that's something important because it makes people feel good about it and make part of it. South Korea and Italy have declared 2024 to 2025 as the years of cultural exchange. Different events are scheduled throughout the year to enhance bilateral relations. This exhibition aims to serve as a milestone for what Korea's culture minister described as a vibrant cultural interaction in the coming years. The special exhibition is hosted by the National Museum of Korean History, the Italian Embassy in Korea, and also the Culture Ministry and major news agency of each country.
It will run until March 31st. Lee e u n h e e Arirang News. On the entertainment front, BTS member Jungkook, who is currently serving in the military, sealed a spot in the top 10 global singles chart 2023 with his track Seven. The International Federation of Phonographic Industry says Seven ranked number 10 on the chart with sales of 1.24 billion. Sales figures are converted from all digital formats, including single track downloads and paid subscription streaming from over 8,000 record labels worldwide. Exports of Korea's Kim or dried seaweed posted a record high last year, with the US proving to be the biggest market. That being said, my colleague Lee Soo Jin walks us through its harvesting, auctioning, and packaging for overseas delivery. To take a look. It's a cold and dry morning here on the west coast of South Korea. The perfect weather to harvest kim. We harvested around 120 tons of kim today. The waves are rougher during the colder weather, which actually makes it taste better. Local fishermen get up at 4 in the morning to harvest the kim that's been cultivated by eco-friendly techniques, ones that no longer use inorganic acids as cleansers after harvesting. Gigantic bags filled with the harvested kim are brought back to port and unloaded so they can be weighed. And this seaweed right here, fresh from the sea, will soon be dried and roasted in nearby factories before being exported worldwide. Exports of kim last year reached a record annual high of 1 trillion won, or around 790 million U.S. dollars, making it South Korea's biggest seafood export. And which kim will be exported across the world? That will be decided in this auction that begins at 11 a.m. sharp each day where primary kim processing plant employees enter a bidding war to secure the best quality seaweed. One bag typically contains 120 kilograms of seaweed. Kim i n t e a director of a primary kim processing plant, purchases around 70 tons of kim each day at these auctions. The kim that we bought today was of great quality. It's also nutritious because it's grown in mudflats, inscribed as World Natural Heritages by UNESCO. It is washed thoroughly before being subjected to high pressure and heat in machines that mass produce dried sheets of kim. The dried kim is then moved to secondary processing plants where it's roasted at nearly 500 degrees and sprinkled with salt. It is now ready to be fed into an auto-cutting machine before being packaged and shipped to places such as the United States, South Korea's top export destination for kim. Exports are expected to rise four to five times year on year. He and other owners of processing plants as well as local fishermen all have no doubts about the momentum behind kim exports continuing, but aren't as confident about whether supply can meet the high demand. The government should ease regulations on the expansion of seaweed farms. While the OSHA's ministry has announced a five-year plan to boost exports, more active investment and policy reforms will be necessary to reach its target export value of $1 billion by 2027. Lee s u j i n Arirang News, Seocheon. Let's take a look at the latest news in the world now. In Poland, thousands of farmers gathered in Warsaw to demonstrate against the EU's climate policies and agricultural imports from Ukraine. The protest is one of many across Europe over the past weeks and is a sign that the West is experiencing fatigue in supporting Ukraine as they continue to resist Russia's invasion. According to Warsaw City Hall, some 10,000 people participated in the protests in front of the Polish parliament, demanding the withdrawal of Poland from the EU's Green Deal, which they deemed too costly, and calling for a ban on imports of Ukrainian grain, which they argue is having a negative impact on Poland's agricultural industry. Ahead of the upcoming EU parliamentary elections in June, protests by farmers in other countries such as Italy, Spain and Belgium have emerged as a prominent political issue. Heavy rainfall in southeastern Peru over the last week has led to devastating floods, displacing thousands. 
At least 2,800 people are struggling for aid amid power outages, a scarcity of drinking water, and a spike in dengue fever. Southeastern Peru has been battered by relentless downpours, with forecasters having warned of an additional 72 hours of heavy rainfall. Rivers have swelled beyond their banks, inundating Inapari city of Tauhamanu province, a lifeline-like region for communities across the borders of Brazil and Bolivia. The overflowing rivers not only submerged streets, but also engulfed at least 600 houses, isolating the region from everyday life. With at least 32 people having died of dengue fever due to the heavy rains and a heat wave leading to a spike in the disease, Peru declared a health emergency in most parts of the country on Monday. French football superstar Kylian Mbappe joined a dinner on Tuesday hosted by French President Emmanuel Macron for Qatari Emir Sheikh Tamim bin Hamad Al Thani, who begins his two-day state visit to France. The main reason for the emir's visit was the negotiations in the French capital for a truce in Gaza, where Qatar would play a role in mediating an immediate and permanent ceasefire agreement in the Gaza Strip. Meanwhile, Mbappe, who plays for Qatari-owned Paris Saint-Germain, is set to leave the club once his contract ends in June. The player confirmed his exit earlier this month. Brazil's federal police and environmental protection agency have said that they have repatriated native parrots and monkeys suspected of having been illegally trafficked to Togo. Several countries supported the repatriation operation and the animals, including 12 parrots of the Lear's Macau species and 17 golden lion tamarins, were returned to Brazil over the weekend, according to a statement from the federal police. Each Macau is reportedly worth between 60000 and 100000 U.S. dollars, and the Tamarins are worth $15,000 each on clandestine markets. Four men involved in the illegal trafficking were arrested. Che Zihi, Arirang News. Good afternoon. We are having big gaps in readings today. Daegu even had sub-zero temperatures this morning, but highs are rising fast to the low teens. Please dress accordingly and take good care of yourself. You really don't want to get sick around this time. Central areas had a warmer start to the morning than yesterday. Then highs in most places will go up to similar or slightly higher than yesterday. Seoul sees a high of 9 degrees, Busan, Gwangju, Jeju at 13 degrees Celsius this afternoon. Mostly cloudy skies in store nationwide with decent air quality. Now there's rain in the forecast tomorrow in southern provinces. Jeju could see 10 to 40 millimeters of somewhat heavy showers. The rain on Thursday will bring a sharp drop in temperatures. And do expect to have spring cold over the Independence Movement Day weekend, but skies will be sunny in most parts of Korea. Take the weather into account for your plans. Then temperatures return to season norms early next week. That's Korea for you, and here's a look at the international weather conditions. That ends our afternoon newscast for this Wednesday here in South Korea. Thank you for watching, but do stay with us for our daily panel session coming up right after this break.